roll across the parking lot. Yeah. What? Safety first. Hi, this is John from Plymouth in Devon in the United Kingdom. You are watching Trucker Josh's vlogs. I've got a CB, but you're too far away, Josh. Drive safe. everybody it's Monday <laughs> it's early uh, I guess well not anymore 730 that's not early feels early so that fire that ripped through a couple businesses in Steinbach yesterday was a little more devastating than we thought uh, it's a total loss the whole building's gone and there's a pet store in the building now I didn't think they had any pets in there I thought it was just a pet food store Turns out there was actually quite a few pets in there and most of them died and didn't make it out. Uh, the fire crews couldn't get to them by the time they were there and that's the saddest part for me. No human life was lost. Uh, buildings can be replaced. But when life is lost, you can't just replace life. Even if it is pets. I've always had a little bit of a soft spot for animals. Maybe more so than some people, uh, but that's what's sort of sitting with me this morning. Kind of sad about that. It makes me sort of think of our boys, you know? If there was ever a tragedy at our home or something. And, oh, no one would be able to stop me from going in to get my dogs. I don't care. You're gonna have to shoot me if, you, if you're gonna try and stop me from going in to save my dogs, okay? You're gonna have to shoot me. I will go in there and I, I don't care what happens to me, I'll go in there and I'll get my boys. Just like if it was your kid or your family member inside still. Who would be able to stop you from running in there and trying to save them, right? Anyway, I'm going to do a little pass by the area here. Uh, they got the fire all out. I just wanted to see the results of it on my way out. Be a little bit of a nosy neighbor, I guess. See what, uh, see what the damage looks like. Uh, it's terrible for these business owners. I'm sure they have insurance. You have to have insurance up here for that. But that's that's not something that you can say to people. Be like, oh, well, you have insurance. It doesn't work that way. There's going to be months now, probably lost business and lost revenue. All of the employees that worked at these stores are now out of a job. You can't just rebuild a building. Yeah, so you have insurance. You can't just rebuild a building overnight. There has to be an investigation now into what happened. And then they have to clear up the site and then, you know, get new building permits and then hire a contracting crew to build it. Uh, they could, who knows how long it'll be before they can get their businesses up and running again. And you know, I'm a business owner myself now too. Well, I have my online content, which is a registered business with the government. But I also have a physical business, which is my trucking business. Because uh, I own my truck now. And if... I lost everything. Yeah, it would be devastating. And it takes a while for things to go through. So my thoughts are with them, all the business owners and their families and all the employees. It's a rainy day. I'm glad I tied the load down yesterday. <laughs> Got it all ready to go. Okay, you can still see the smoke in the area here going to turn my vents to recirculate for now because uh, it was also a paint store that burnt down and they're saying the smoke can be toxic. I'm not going to stay around here very long but there's a lot of people who live in this area too. It was right on Main Street, like right in the heart of the, of the town. off here to our right. Terrible, eh? Huh. 
Well, I don't know the business owners personally, but uh, I feel their pain today. It's a tough one. We've had a little bit of a change of plans. I still have a load of lumber behind me, but it's different lumber. It's actually the exact same lumber, but it's on a different trailer. So it is actually different lumber. It's the same type of load, but it's going down to Des Moines, Iowa, instead of just to Fargo. They have a nice reload for me out of Iowa, and this will keep me busy until Wednesday. Just remember, I gotta be home on Thursday, very important. The IVF transfer with my wife. So I've gotta be there for that. So we're just pulling into the Flying J. <laughs> How many clips do I start with saying that? I shouldn't even have to tell you, you should just know. Oh, he's probably going to Flying J. We're in Grand Forks, North Dakota. I'm just gonna grab a coffee and get a little food in the truck. I don't have any food in the truck right now and that always makes me a little bit nervous. I don't need fuel yet. We're actually doing really good fuel economy. The wind has switched and it is now coming from Canada and pushing me south. So it's been a really good day. think that this whole area in here like in front of the pumps is a huge waste of space it's all paved so it cost a fortune to pave it but you can't use it for parking or anything otherwise you're blocking in the pumps right you can park here though hey straws cheaper I'm here all night Try and find a parking spot. Yes, yeah, so I gotta run in and grab this coffee. Oh, they're building something back here. I wonder if they're extending the the parking lot or what. I think this is all parking up here, right? Or is this uh, handicap parking? No, just that one is handicap parking. This one is regular parking. Or is it paid parking? Shoot. I think that one was paid parking. <laughs> Whatever, I picked this one now. Too late. I don't see any markings on the ground that say that I can't park here, so. It's my spot now. Just gonna straighten myself out a little bit. That was a bit of a funny turn that I took. Back myself in nice and straight between the lines. Because this is the US of A and they paint lines, even though they're pretty faded here, but most truck stops you find in the US are paved with nice lines park for the parking so you know exactly if you're in the lines or not. Now don't get me wrong, most truck stops in Canada are also paved. But that's a new thing. When I first started trucking uh, long haul in 2011, the trucking scene, as it were, was very different back then in Canada. Since I've started in 2011, there has been huge leaps forward in truck stops in Canada. It's been very nice to see. The, the Petro Pass, Petro Canada truck stops have expanded, they've renovated, they're doing well. Husky was bought out by Esso and they've revamped and renovated most of their locations as well, which has brought it up to the standard of everything else. And I believe this all started when Flying J entered the Canadian market. They entered around 2010, 2011, right around when I started. It was still very new then, or maybe it was slightly after. It was around that time. And I remember when Flying J came up to Canada, they built truck stops like they do, exactly like they do in the States here, right? They, they're identical and they had clean showers, uh, sanitized showers, they had you know easy access, paved parking, beautiful truck stops, right? Which probably in the US you just took for granted, like that was just normal. In Canada, it blew our minds a little bit. It was like, wow, look at us. Oh, we're getting places. 
And I really think that them entering the Canadian market really forced all of the other truck stop chains in Canada to really up their game because they don't want to lose their business to an American company. Now, we have, we're friendly with our neighbors. I understand it is an American company and I'm a huge fan of Flying J and you know, maybe I should be supporting Canadian companies. I, I do like Petro Canada. I got a fuel card there as well. I go there quite often. Uh, it, very nice stops up there. But I, I really think that they all really had to up their game to compete with Flying J. Flying J came in with American money and that, that that's big, big money. A lot of money in the US and uh, it, it really forced them to uh, the market to get better. So now, I mean, we got great truck stops everywhere. I, I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but that's sort of the, what I've always sort of thought and figured, because it was all around the same time, but maybe, maybe it would have happened and maybe it would have improved without the presence of Flying J. It would be nice to see more Canadian truck stops uh, become as big as the American chains. We don't have the population to support such big billion trillion dollar companies, but uh, you know, at least it's an American company and, uh, you know, not some company from overseas that has nothing to do with us, like some Chinese company or something. I don't see how that would ever work. Who knows? Who knows? I don't know. I'm going to go inside. I'm trying to put my shoes on right now. Grab myself a coffee, get some food, and we will continue our journey down to the great state Iowa. I owe you a video of my trip to Iowa. See what I did there? I remembered my blankets this time, and I even brought a better spare one than the spare one I had in here. It's all these crumbs on. Really? How would crumbs get on my bed? I don't even eat back here. Anyways, we're set. Got myself a cheeseburger hot dog thinger and two tornadoes. And a rib sandwich for later, that's in the cooler. Set. Oh, and a coffee. Yeah, it's in a coffee. The most important part, you might say. Let's get out of here. This is not gonna be my half hour yet. I'm gonna stop for a half hour a little further down the road. Maybe for supper, we'll see. Shall we? Beautiful day outside. Oh, look at this. They have uh, long combination units in North Dakota here too. That looks like two 48 foot trailers. So it's not quite as long as ours in, uh, in Canada, but that's still pretty good. That makes sense. Cause like North Dakota is like the prairies of Canada. It's wide open. Why not let them have two trailers? Between certain areas, like not everywhere, but down the highway, like, just makes sense.
it's the next morning. We drove through the whole night. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. We went to sleep. <laughs> uh, so my night is over now. The next day is beginning. So we're going to continue it a little bit in this video. Uh, we're going to include the delivery. I got to go into Des Moines, which is that way, not too far. I got to sleep with the sounds of the highway right beside me. Absolutely beautiful. So it was a long day yesterday. It was. Uh, but we did make it all the way down here into, uh, would this be southern or central Iowa? A little north of Des Moines. This lumber's got to get off my trailer. It's in the way. I have another load I want to put on here, but I can't put it on there until we get these sticks off of here. Old Blue has been running great. Knock on wood. And we made it to this rest area, which has fantastic vending machines with very delicious cookies that I had for supper and Pop-Tarts that I'm going to have for breakfast. Rest stop food. It may not be good, it may not be healthy, but it's convenient. So I've just started up Old Blue. Just getting the juices flowing, getting the oil flowing, the coolant flowing. And we're about to head out. I guess I should uh, get Karen set up here. Make sure that she knows what she's talking about. I don't want to miss my delivery. I need to get unloaded as quickly as possible. I have a reload over in Davenport that I have to be there for. I can't miss this. Because if I miss it today, they're going to load me tomorrow morning. And I'm gonna, then I'm going to have a really hard time getting home for the transfer. Like the biggest day of our lives and our marriage for, for, for big... It's a big deal. So I have to get loaded today. I'm going to include that reload in tomorrow's video, but I wanted to complete today's with the delivery. It's going into a lumber company in uh, Des Moines, Iowa. It's coming from Meadow Lake, Saskatchewan. So some Canadian lumber Proceed coming down to the here. Highlighted route. All right, all right, let me check your work here. I always double check what my GPS says the route is. I have a Rand McNally truck GPS. So for the most part, she's pretty good. She's a little bossy. But uh, pretty good. Keeps me on truck routes usually most of the time. Uh, but every once in a while you catch her in a what are you thinking moment, right? And you really want to catch those moments before you get on the road. Because it has happened to me before. Where uh, I get into a big city. And suddenly she's like, hey, take this way. This is the best way. And you're looking at it and you're like, that's not the best way. That is clearly a low bridge or that is clearly not a truck road what are you thinking and then we have a fight and then it's an awkward rest of the day and it's, it's bad for everybody so we got to get on the same page sort of have like a team meeting first thing in the morning you know it's good you've got to remember to let them know who's boss if they ever try to boss you around a little too much you remind them i'm the boss you work for me, Karen. You screw up too many times, I'm throwing you out the window. You're replaceable. How was that? Was that going too far? Was that very boss-like? I don't know. I don't know. I'm sorry, Karen. Maybe I went a little too far. Don't get mad at me and lead me somewhere else. You gotta be careful with them, too. You know, you upset them too much and they, they, they mess with you. I was just kidding, Karen. You're a valuable member of this team. But I'm still the boss. Sure, now she's got nothing to say. As soon as I get on the road and I'm busy, occupied with traffic, then she's gonna be yapping her mouth off. It's a hot one. We're here at the lumber yard where we gotta deliver. Don't wanna get run over now. Everybody can see me. Oops, the wrong one. No, what's the one? Oh, do I know how to put this on? 
All right, so they're just gonna swing past here. I'm gonna show them my paperwork. We're just gonna confirm that I am at the right place. There's no other lumber yard around here, so this better be the right place. And then once they confirm that, I'll take my straps off and they'll take their lumber off. Undone them on the other side. The way I do it, I'll take them off like this. Just hang them all up along the side here. Get it all off here so we can start unloading on the other side. And then I go and bring them all to the front here where I can roll them up. And that's what it looks like when I'm ready to start rolling them up. And I go get my strap roller, I hook it onto my trailer right here and roll them all up and put them where they belong in the headache rack. And once we're all empty, my straps go in this center one. Uh, these wires need to be, uh, they're just for these lights up here. They're supposed to be hanging up here a little better, but the short ones here, medium size or longer and long ones on the bottom. And this is how this was when I when I bought it. I gotta figure out is this supposed to be screwed in up here or well it fits up there, right? Just comes down sometimes. I'll work on that. Just little things, there's always little things to work on. Lock her up. Ready to go. And the last thing I do before I'm ready to leave is I bring my tarps from the back. That's the only place I could keep them. To the front. I guess I could have put them on top of the lumber in the front, but whatever. I had them at the back. Nothing wrong with that, but I bring them up to the front here. Just in case people get sneaky and they want to take them from me at night or something, right? I wake up and I can feel it when people jump up on my truck or on my trailer up here. But I don't feel it as much when people are messing around at the back. It's never happened to me before. It's probably not very likely to happen that someone takes your tarps, but I like to keep all my equipment and all my personal stuff as close to me as possible. All right. That's all I got for you today, guys. We're gonna go pick up that load tomorrow on tomorrow's video. Well, today for me, tomorrow for you. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did hit that thumbs up button share it it helps me out a lot and it's free to do uh, leave me a comment down below it helps with the algorithm and stuff tell me what you'd like to see more of what can I do better how can I make these videos better for you I always like to hear what you guys want to see I'll see you tomorrow